Hi guys, this is Lakshay. Today we're going to be spending a little bit of time talking about ASCII preparation. Now, this is that's not applicable to FCAM ASCII, but advice is for any ASCII examination. So let's get started. I'm going to run through some of the questions that have been asked to me in the recent past, and I'll just share some of my experiences with my MCAM ASCII, FCAM ASCII, and the USMLE ASCII that I took in 2016. So uh, the first thing uh, before we go into this is make sure you are familiar with the IT system or familiar with the software that the college is going to use uh, for this exam and as much as possible. Make sure you can, you do have some idea about the technical glitches and you should be able to get through them. Uh, now, hopefully this will not happen, but just in case, to be on the safe side, just do your best to get around this and uh, sort out the common technical Glitches. And if the college is doing any workshops to uh, familiarize candidates with this, I would highly recommend going to that. Uh, other thing is uh, you should have a decent quality uh, broadband connection, a fast broadband connection, and decent quality uh, earphones to cut down any interference in the noise. And uh, when you prepare for the stations, I know, however you're preparing, whether you are recording yourself or you are using a timer, if the station is eight minutes, try and finish in seven and a half minutes or prepare keeping that seven and a half minute time window in your mind because 30 seconds I would keep extra for the voice lag, for the technical glitches. And again, I think you will go a little bit slow or you should go a little bit slow on the day of the examination. Speak clearly. There is gonna be a lot of difference when you are talking to someone in person or when you're going to speak to them through a screen. It's going to be a little bit odd. This will add another layer of complexity. But having thought about it, I think uh, this should be less stressful than going into a room where there are three other people, uh, a patient, an examiner, maybe a training examiner, which all just watching you and some of them nodding, some of them don't really nod and don't give any expression. So I think this will be less intimidating. And I would think about it in this way. So I think it's difficult to not to do well in this examination. If I think about it like this, you are a candidate who wants to, of course, pass the examination. The patient has nothing personal against you. They want to give you a pass. And again, most people are nice. They would definitely want to give you a pass. That's why they are there for. The examiner, again, nothing personal against you. They may or may not know you, but Again, they want to pass you. They have a checklist, and based on what you ask, they're going to tick there and give you a total score. I don't know if they have a global score this time or not, but your behavior in general would affect their perception of you. So just be nice, smile, be confident uh, in whatever you are saying, and uh, everybody wants to give you a pass. You want to pass. Your examiner wants to pass. Your patients want to give you a pass. So it's hard to fail unless you screw up big time. So just do your best, think about it like this, and I'm sure you'll do well. Apologies about that. That was my son who was keen to figure out why his dad is sitting in a room and talking to the screen. Let's keep moving. So the next piece of advice is uh, try and film yourself when you are Tripping for this examination uh, with your buddy or with uh, one of the consultants, one of the examiners who happen to be at your shop, try and film yourself. And uh, I would highly recommend doing some preparation sessions in a sort of a virtual mode so you will have uh, an idea of what can go wrong. We will get a feel of it. When you film yourself, Definitely, definitely see yourself, how you look, how, what your expressions are like, what your voice is like, how fast you're speaking, how clearly you're speaking. So go through all of this and then change based on any feedback from the consultants or if you feel something could have been done better. Also, it's worth getting some feedback from a non-medical person. If you show them your videos, your preparation videos, uh, it could be your sibling who is not a healthcare professional, not a doctor, or your mom, your dad, one of your non-medical friends, they will give you feedback from a different standpoint. So it's 
worth getting their opinion in terms of your general behavior on the screen and what they would like to see more or what they would prefer more in their doctor if they are um, consulting a healthcare provider, what they would want to see more of. So that's number two. Um, one of the questions that has been asked to me is, what, what should we do if we finish early? So I think the stations are eight, eight minutes this time, and there are no double stations. When I took the exam, they were double stations at 14, 15 minutes for Lisa stations. It's quite a long time. Luckily, this time, these are just eight minute stations. And say, if you finish at six and a half minutes, what are you gonna do? Now, I used to find this odd silence very, very awkward. So what you can do is you can ask them is there anything else that you need to know or is there anything else that they would want to discuss with you or any questions or any comments or any other concerns the good thing with this question is that i mentioned is, is there anything else that you think i should know if you direct this question to the actor to the patient they might say something one of the pieces of information that you have not asked in your is to add a bit of realism to the exam is if you end up finishing early is you can ask the patient um, how's life going on how are they coping up with the pandemic uh, i think this would be taken positively and who knows what kind of answer you would get and again this should be somewhere around that question uh, is there anything else that you need to know so i would highly highly recommend asking this question if you don't know where you're heading to if you don't know what the diagnosis is or if you end up finishing up early, you might get some very useful information with this. One of the other questions that was asked is, uh, what should we do if we end up having a total blank out in the middle of the station? Uh, if we totally lose the plot and after a minute into the station, we have no idea what's going on. Now that's difficult. The station is eight minutes, but what I would suggest in this situation is to step back and just say, I'm sorry, can I have a look at the question again? Can I read the question again? Read the question, read the pie chart, and see where the marks are, to what uh, area the marks have been allotted for in this specific question. In the history, examination, diagnosis, management, communication, what carries the most marks, and just focus more on that in the next five or six minutes that you have. And just apologize, start from the beginning, ask the examiners, if you're allowed to do so. I think most of them say yes and uh, just give it a new start. And uh, one of the other questions is, are there any resources that uh, I would recommend? Now, there are a few of them. I would leave them uh, in the show notes of this uh, video. So if you just look into the show notes, you will see some links to the websites like Oski Star. There are some excellent YouTube resources, especially for psychiatry videos that you can tailor up. Uh, based on, on your needs and based on the length of the station, but that will just give you a sense of how you should approach the psychiatric stations. Um, and uh, one uh, of the last couple of things that I would like to mention is when you are coming out or when you are moving from one station to other station, try and just leave everything there. Don't carry any mental baggage. If you have not done well, if you have screwed up, just try and leave it there. Now, this is very easy to say, but it is extremely difficult to do. So how you can build up this mindset is try and do some mocks. If the exam is 12 or 15 stations, try and do at least six station, five or six station mocks with your colleagues, with your buddies. And uh, in those mocks, if you end up not doing well, you try and just leave the mental baggage and just carry on, give a new start to every station. If you continue thinking about the previous station that you didn't do well, you are gonna screw up this station as well. And this takes a bit of practice and the best way to do that would be to do some mock tests. If you have not done them, that's fine. Just try and do this. This should help you focusing on the current station and not thinking about the previous station. And uh, the last piece of advice is uh, just be nice, be, be confident, be genuinely interested in the patient's problems, or at least pretend or show that you're genuinely interested. You need to be at your best behavior on the day of the exam. And again, as I said, most people are nice. Everyone wants to give you a pass. So there is a good chance that you will pass if you just be at your best behavior, be nice, 
try and be confident. And knowledge is not such a big issue now. These exams are focusing more on communication. Knowledge is not focused on. It's important to have knowledge, obviously, but if you don't know a diagnosis, if you have no clue with the brief history that you have, what the diagnosis could be, just do your brief history, brief examination, if the pie chart tells you to do an examination. And then if you still have no clue, ask that question if anything else doesn't need still don't know, just tell the patient that you're going to speak to one of your medical colleagues or one of the other consultants and try and find what's the best way and try and get their thoughts on what's going on. And this can happen in real life as well. Of course, when you become a consultant, you wouldn't know everything. It's learning is a lifelong process. So just be clear about that. Accept that. Tell the patient. They would appreciate that as well. And asking for help, it's not a sign of weakness. We are just trying to do best for the patient. So tell them, I'm going to speak to my colleague and see what their thoughts are. I think this could be this, this, this. Well, I'm not really sure what's going on. And uh, that should suffice. I hope this was useful, and I wish you all the best for the examination. Bye-bye.